Good evening and greetings from the dank basement. This is your wicked Uncle Squinty. And this evening, as you can see, my elegant satin smoking jacket is at the laundry. And uh, I've had to substitute this fairly ratty bathrobe because I lack my smoking jacket. Such a pity. Because I am going to be reviewing a stuff that should be elegant like fine champagne. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Toque Champagne. Can you see it? One of these days I'm hoping somebody will post a comment telling me how bad or how good my camera work is. I'm absolutely guessing. I don't know if you can see this or not. I hope you can. And I apologize for the cheesy accent. Uh, Toque Champagne. Well, first of all, I want to start off by saying it does not, in any way, smell like any champagne I have ever drunk in my life. And I have drunk a few, my friends. I've had Mums. I've had Moet Chandon. I've had Clicquot. I've had Devroge. Never, to the best of my recollection, have I had Dom Perignon, but I have had Pieper Heisdick. And so I've had some fairly good champagnes, actual champagnes from the Champagne region of France. This ain't it. Sorry, Roderick. Have you guys ever smelled uh, Catawba juice? You know, they, they package up this non-alcoholic sparkling grape juice and champagne bottles. And so if you have people that can't drink, you know, you can serve them a little bubbly to toast with or whatever. Pretty common at weddings, at least here in the States. That's what this smells like to me, is Catawba juice. It's not unpleasant by any means. It's just not champagne. In fact, it's not even evocative of champagne. What you get is this sort of nice white grape scent. Very sweet, very pleasant. The grind is typical toque, as is the moisture content. Even though this tin has been open now for about six, seven weeks, I'm pleased to say that it still smells pretty much as good as it smelled the first time I cracked open the tin. Another thing I'd like to say to the positive about this is, unlike some other toque scents. The scent on this one is very strong, very apparent, and it lasts, which is a surprise. And it changes nicely while it's up in the nose. It starts out with this sweet sort of catawba grape, as I said, uh, catawba juice scent. And then about five minutes later in the nose, you start to get almost a pastry, a sweet pastry sort of scent. It's quite lovely. Uh, the burn is interesting, and I haven't encountered this with too many other snubs. If you've ever jumped into a swimming pool that has had chlorinated water in it, and you got some of that chlorine up in your nose, that's the kind of burn this gives. It's not a real strong burn. It's not unpleasant. The drip is really nice on this. But it has a little burn, has a little nicotine. On the nicotine scale where one is nothing, and five is, you better sit down. Uh, nicotine on this is a three. Um, overall quality of this snuff on the squinty scale, where one is a rot gut bum wine, and five is $400 a bottle champagne. Well, I'm giving this a three and a half. And that's a pretty generous rating. That's not to say that I don't like it. I like it very much. It just doesn't really smell like champagne. And I'm wondering if that isn't a good thing. If you've ever smelled stale champagne the morning after, that's not a good smell. It's kind of nauseating. Uh, so, you know, for what it is, it isn't really champagne, but it's really, really good. And it does something that only one other snuff I have ever tried, and that's the Toke Coke, does. And that is it gives the impression of carbonation. Just like champagne has bubbles and Coca-Cola has bubbles, the, these two snuffs from Toke seem to almost give a bubbly sensation in your nose. It's a little bit like the bubbles that go up your nose when you uh, sip from a flute of champagne. It's quite good. Uh, it just isn't really champagne. It's also a little too sweet for me to, to use like real frequently. I can keep this in my rotation, and I have gone back to it again and again. I think it's a very satisfying, good snuff for what it is. Why don't you try the 10-gram tin? 
I can't see myself snuffing through 25 grams of this in a year. But the 10 gram might be nice to have on hand. And uh, I also see this snuff as being a wonderful blending snuff. Excuse me. It's, yeah, it pretty much clogs up the nose. This stuff, um, I only took a couple of little apple feed side size bumps, and it's kind of plugging things up a little bit. Uh, you might want to, every once in a while, take a little hit of menthol or camphor or something uh, in between bumps of this so you don't get clogged up. And that scent, it, it's just... It's just wonderful. It's staying up in there. It's really, really nice. Again, it ain't champagne. It even it ain't even Mad Dog 2020. It's actually closer to Mad Dog 2020 than champagne. Uh, I guess sparkling Catawba is what it most reminds me of. On the scale of one to five, it's a dead in the middle three. Uh, the burn is mild, so I give the burn maybe a two. Uh, nicotine content two or three. Snuffability. Definitely four, maybe five, except for the fact, it would be a five, except for the fact that, at least with me, it clogs a little bit, clogs the nose. Uh, so it's a three. I'd get some, you know, if you were making an order to Toke or to Mr. Snuff or somewhere. Uh, why don't you throw a tin of this into your shopping cart? I don't think you'll be disappointed. It Again, it just isn't champagne, champagne, champagne. From the dank basement, wearing the ratty bathrobe that quite nearly passes... As an elegant satin smoking jacket, this is your benevolent Uncle Squinty, wishing you the best, Godspeed, and God save the Queen, whoever she may be.